Hello everyone, welcome back. Hello, I am Nicoleta Velescu. And I am Daniela Anatoklika. And this is your English class. Let's Today, go. we are going to talk about present tense simple and present tense continuous uses, time expressions and exceptions. Okay, let's go. Let's take a look at the rules of present tense simple for the affirmative sentence. I know there's a lot to learn, but you're, you are already familiar with these. Uh, the structure is subject, verb and an ending which can be S, E, S or I, E, S. Uh, remember, if the subject is I, you, we or they, the verb stays the same, we add nothing to its base form. Like the examples here, I cook delicious meals, you dance, we love broccoli, monkeys climb trees. The first rule. We add an S for most of the verbs if the subject is he, she or it. He cooks delicious meals, she dances at the weekend and monkey, a monkey climbs trees. The second rule applies to verbs ending in O, CH, SH, SS and X which take an ES. He goes to school early, he fixes cars when they're broken, it washes its kittens, we're talking about a cat, she watches documentaries on TV and he misses going to school because of the pandemic. The third rule goes for verbs ending in consonant plus Y which drop the Y and turn into IES. She carries an umbrella on a rainy day, he fries fish every Saturday. Remember, we only add an ending to verbs for the subject he, she or it or a noun which replaces them. The negative sentence has the structure after the verb we have do not, don't, does not, doesn't and the verb in the base form with nothing going after it. Like the example here, I don't understand the maths problem, she doesn't understand maths problem. We don't watch TV during the week, he doesn't watch TV. You do not go to school on foot, she does not go to school on foot. They don't eat fish, it doesn't eat fish. The, the interrogative sentence has a switch between the auxiliary, the subject and the verb. So we have do, does first, then the subject and the verb. Do you play the piano? Does he play the piano? Do we have enough money? Does she have enough money? Do they live in the jungle? Does she live in the jungle? So for the negative and interrogative sentences, the, the ES goes after the auxiliary do. It turns into does. Present continuous is a lot easier than present simple, if you're asking the teachers, I suppose. Most verbs take ing after the base form, like in the case of sleep, she's sleeping, go, going, or cry, crying. We have three columns with the forms for the affirmative, negative and interrogative. Exceptions apply when the verb ends in consonant, vowel and consonant and this last syllable is a stressed one. When we double the last letter then we add the ing. The case goes for plan, planning, I'm planning to have a party, sit, sitting, we're not sitting, we're standing, put, putting, why are you putting the books under the chair? Pay attention to verbs whose last syllable is not stressed, like open, visit, happen, when we don't double the last letter. She's opening the presents, we're visiting our grandparents, and hey, what's happening over there? Rule number three is for verbs ending in E, which drop it at the end and only take ING. The case of dance, dancing, skate, skating, and leave, living. The last rule, which is a bit more difficult, is for verbs ending in IE, which change, changes to Y and then they take ING. Die, dying, she's dying to meet the singer, she's very happy about it lie, lying, she's not lying, she's telling the truth, or tie, tying, are you tying your shoes yourself? Well done! 
This is it about the rules. Now, let's take a look at them together. Present simple and continuous. The clue words for present simple are always, usually, sometimes, often, rarely, seldom and never. These are called frequency adverbs. For present continuous, we have at the moment, now, currently, at present, today and this week or this month. Present simple the, and present continuous, we'll take a look at them comparatively now. In the affirmative, I sing, I'm singing. I sing in the shower, that's a habit I have. I'm singing now, la la la, for example. Uh, the negative sentence, I don't sing, he, she doesn't sing, we don't sing because our voice sounds terrible. I'm not singing now, I'm just humming. Hmm. And present simple and continuous in the interrogative. Do you sing? Is this a habit of yours? Is she singing? I can't hear very well. Some uses, actually the uses. Present simple is used for repeated actions, which means a habit or a routine. Like the example, I drink a cup of coffee every morning. Whereas present continuous is for actions happening now, at the moment of speaking. It's uh, 8 a.m. and I'm drinking my coffee now. Some examples. He is a chef. He cooks delicious meals. Now he is cooking a new recipe. Hey, I am a builder. I build houses. At the moment, I am building a new house. She works very hard most of the time. At the moment, she is having coffee with, with her friends. The second use is for present simple, which expresses a permanent situation. Like in this case, they are surgeons, they operate on people. Present continuous is used for a temporary situation happening for a limited period of time. Currently, they are working as volunteers in a retirement home. This means for a couple of weeks or months. Another example. She is a teacher. She teaches in a school. This semester, she is teaching from home. She is English, she lives in London, but at present she is living in Rome because she is taking part in an exchange program. Temporary situation again. They usually go to school by car. This week they are taking the bus, their car is broken. Let's take a look at the third use. We use present simple for a general truth or something which can be scientifically proven. Like, the earth revolves around the sun. It goes round and round and this happens daily. Present continuous is used to talk about changes that happen gradually or changes in development. Like, the earth is changing due to global warming. Another example. Polar bears live in the Arctic area. Climate change is affecting their habitat and they are going extinct. The fourth use. We use present simple to express, to express our thoughts, feelings and states. But we don't use present continuous with stative verbs. We use present simple instead, even if the action is happening now. Let's take a look at some examples. Stative verbs are divided into a few categories, like verbs of thinking, to believe, consider, think, imagine, know, forget, agree, so verbs that are connected with our head. Let's take a look at the examples. I don't believe it. Is that really true? Or, I think I can do this. The second category of verbs are verbs of preference, like like, love, hate, prefer, desire, want and need. The examples are 
I need help and I hate this food. The third one is verbs of senses like taste, smell, hear, sim, look, touch. The examples, they don't seem happy. It tastes very good. And the last one is verbs of senses have, belong, own, possess, contain, consist, include. Do these keys belong to you? Yes, they're mine. And, okay. and they have a new house. The fifth use is with the, the adverb always, which is an exception. We use always with present simple to show how frequently an action happens. Like, we, are, we always celebrate our wedding anniversary. Whereas with present continuous, it shows the speaker's annoyance. The speaker is not pleased. Look, they're always forgetting our wedding anniversary. Another example would be, they always hang out with their friends on Saturdays. It's a habit. But, they are always hanging out with their friends on Saturdays. The girls are complaining about the boys' habit. The sixth and final use is that of future meaning. With present simple, presses a timetable or schedule, an official arrangement, like our plane takes off at 8 and lands at 10.30, Whereas with present continuous, we have something personal, a personal arrangement, something planned in advance. Like they're having dinner at the restaurant tonight. They have already booked a table. Another example. The match starts at 7 o'clock tonight. And they are meeting in the pub at half past 6 to watch it together. Are you ready for some practice now? Because practice makes perfect. Let's see. Well, you are going to arrange some words to make some sentences. Take a look, take a pen and write down. You have a hint. The first word in the sentence has a capital letter. In this case, it's my. Tick tock, tick tock. My brother isn't watching a film right now. Isn't watching a film on TV right now. Let's see. Yes, you're right. My brother isn't watching a film on TV right now. One more sentence. It starts with does. It has a question mark, so it's an interrogative sentence. Want to give it a try? Come on, it's easy. Does she always practice basketball on Fridays? Um, let's see, because we have a have oh, there. Oh, yes, we have a have. Which means, does she always have basketball practice on Fridays? Good. Okay, well done now. This one is a bit longer. And it has a but in it, and the usually, and the today, which means we have two actions. Let's give them a few seconds. Yes. Take some time and think. And a hint. It's a permanent situation as opposed to a temporary one. They usually work in an office, but today they're visiting a factory. This is it. Well done. A question again. Hmm. That's a question you might get from your teachers when you're not paying attention. And it goes, are you even listening to what I'm saying? Or maybe from your mom or dad whenever they feel like you're not listening. Well done. Okay. Now this sounds like a question you're 
in which you're complaining about something because we have an always and a 9G. Ready? Okay, your brother is always taking my bike without asking. I hate it. Well done. I suppose it's the last one. In this one, you're talking to your teacher. Teacher, let's see what you're saying. Hmm. I don't understand this exercise. I hope you do. And this is, you're talking about something else here. Okay, well done. We have a bit more practice, but this one is a bit more difficult. Let's take a look at the uses we have discussed earlier. We have both from present simple and present continuous. Let's match the halves with the um, uses on the left, sentences on the right. Which of the sentences express a permanent situation? Something that happens like all the time. I live in London. This is where you live. Maybe you'll be moving later, but we don't know that. An easy one is the second one, an action happening now. Mm, I'm painting my room. Okay, well done. A temporary situation is... Let's take a look. This one. I'm living with a friend until I find a flat. So for a limited period of time. Now I don't have a flat, but I will move once I find one. A habit or a repeated action. This is the one with often or always. We often eat out at the weekend. A scientific fact or a general truth. Let's see. It's the one about the sun. The sun rises in the east. This is what will always happen. An annoying habit. Well... Why are you always talking me behind my back? This is something that you shouldn't do to people. Future arrangement. This weekend we are visiting our grandparents. We have already uh, bought the train tickets maybe or we have told them we'd go. A timetable. The last one is the most difficult one. Our train leaves in 10 minutes. So this train leaves in 10 minutes. It's a future action, but we always use present simple. This is it. Thank you to those who helped us. Pictures that we have used and the YouTube channels that inspired us for our lesson. Next time, we will talk about new jobs, gadgets and technology, housework and chores, and feelings. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. Bye. Goodbye.